Hi, this is Jeannie from Metal Dollhouse Rescue. Tonight I'm going to work on touching up the paint on my um, Mark's Colonial House. And so I thought maybe you'd enjoy following along. We've painted together before, but you know, it's always good to have a reminder and to see a different, maybe a different technique on another house. So let's take a look at this house and see what needs to be done. Okay, I think I have this set to, so you can see what I'm doing. This is the house I'm working on. It's a Marks Colonial. It's the one that I disassembled recently. I did a video of disassembling it, so you know how to do that. I'm going to give this a quick wipe off. As a reminder, first of all, um, how I like to clean these houses. This one has been cleaned, but I'm going to wipe it off anyway. And um, it's a reminder, and also it'll give it one more chance to get anything off that needs to come off in the way of dirt. Now, this is awesome cleaner from the Dollar Tree. It's one of my favorite cleaners to use. I always spray it on the paper towel rather than on the house. Um, the other thing I like to use is rubbing alcohol, which I have here in a spray bottle. And this works best if you're just like cleaning off dust. But in this case, I want to make sure that in case there's any last little spots of dirt, I'm going to get that cleaned off before I start to paint. As I said, this house is in very good condition. I can find very little with it that needs to be painted, but I'm going to um, do those little scratches. Okay, there's a little spot. I'm just double checking to make sure it's um, a little scratch and not dirt. And I do think it is a little spot right there where the a little bit of paint is gone. So we'll touch that up. It's all going to be the same color because it's all everything that I'm seeing here that's gone is just a little bit of white. Here there might be a little bit of gray. We may tr try to fix that. A little scratch. But it's in very good condition and I don't think there was any rust on this house at all but let's just give it one more little clean and then we'll get some paint mixed up and touch those spots up. All right, let's start with a reminder of what you might need to paint. You'll need a, a paintbrush. I like one with a fairly um, not very big end on it. Put my finger up there so you can see it's not real wide and it's not real long. So I can control it. You can certainly get finer brushes, but for this work, you want something fairly small. I use a dinner plate as a palette, and afterwards, this is acrylic paint. I can just soak that in the sink, and that paint will come right off and not harm my plate at all. Here's my uh, work that I'm going to fix this little scratch on. And I need a cup of water to rinse my brush out in. As I change color, or if I want to make my paint thinner, and I like to have a paper towel handy because sometimes I'll blot my brush on the paper towel to get a little of that moisture off or when I after I change colors. So, all right, I've put two colors on here. Um, this is antique white. It's just acrylic craft paint. And then my favorite that I like to add to it when I'm working with white on a dollhouse is a little bit of this buttermilk color. Now, here's a hint that I might have shared with you before, but I will again. Sometimes when your paint comes, it comes with a sticker on the top that shows you what color it is. This one did. And, of course, I'm not concerned about that other white one. But this one, look, look at this bottle of white. It did not have that on it. So early on, I'll paint a big dot of white or a cross um, on there of whatever color is in the bottle. So when I have these down in a box, I can look at the top of it and see what color is in that bottle. Here's a brown bottle. This one came with it. But often they do not come with that dot. So I'll either paint a dot or uh, an X on there of the right color to help me out. So just a little hint. All right, I've already mixed a little of this buttercream together with the white. And I'm sure you can't see the color differentiation, but this is just a little bit off white. And I'm going to try a, a new technique. And on this scratch here, you probably cannot see, but I have already put a piece of tape next to that scratch on each side. I just use regular tape like you use for wrapping a present. Scratch tape, or this is a, a different brand. Um, so you won't be able to see it because it's clear. But my idea is that if I can keep my paint right on that scratch, it will avoid any overpaint. So I'm just going to try this. I've never done this before. So I'm just going to touch that up. This color is not too bad as far as a good match. And we'll let that dry and then we'll pull that tape off and see if that was successful or not. So this scratch, I've already tried to just touch it up a little bit. This one I did not put tape on. But if I just touch that very, very lightly with my brush, and then you've seen me do this tap, tap with the brush, and then sometimes I'll tap, tap with my finger. So I'm doing that, tap, tap with my finger, and that takes some of that excess paint off to keep that paint right there on that little scratch. Now you might recall, I've said before, 
this paint dries just a little bit darker than it goes on. So if it's just a little bit light, don't be concerned. Also, also it's easy to do another coat, to adjust your paint color and do another coat. So um, if it's just a little bit light, I am not going to be concerned about that. Plus, I think, you know, just having it fixed a little bit makes it look better than it did. So now I'm going to tap, tap with my finger, get some of that over paint off. I'm sure you cannot tell, but I can tell you in person it's looking pretty good. Better than the scratch look. Sometimes those where that paint's gone will almost act like a little valley to hold your new coat of paint. So um, it helps it be conducive to not doing that over paint. This house is in very good condition. I um, can see very few spots that need any touch up, but we are going to look for those spots and make it look as good as we can. There was no rust as far as I could tell, no missing tabs. I think that's pretty good for the first coat. We'll try, after it dries, we'll look at it again and see how it dried, if it needs to be a little bit darker or not. Again, here I'm going to my palette to get a little bit of paint. If that paint's a little thick, I get a drop of water out of my cup, kind of dab it on the edge of my plate, and then use that wet brush to just thin that paint just a teeny bit. Honestly, I don't know that I see anywhere else that I want to even mess with. There's a few light scratches here in the door. I might do that where I put the paint on and then wipe it off and just let it fill those scratches in a teeny bit. Very faint little, little scratches there. All right, I'm going to see if I can take this paint, this tape off and see if that worked very well or not. Was that a good technique or not? I don't know. Hmm. So far it looks good. Let's try the other side. I tried not to put that tape on real tight. You know what I'm saying? Pretty sure you can't tell, but it look, just looks really, really good. Let's see. It was right in there. This one here might need another coat. But I think it's I think it's looking really good. So I'm going to call this project close to done. I'm going to check out every single piece of this house and make sure it looks good. The other thing I'm going to do, which I, I don't know why I forgot to do it, but I'm going to photograph all these walls. Because as you know, different times people are missing this wall or that wall. And somebody's already asked for laundry room walls, and this house has a nice laundry room. So um, I'm going to photograph all these pictures, all these walls, so they'll be available to anybody that wants to download them. Or if you need me to print them off for you, we'll have that ready for you. All right, thanks again for joining me. I will talk to you later.